Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath to every one of you. And it's, I hope that you have a wonderful week. Even if it was winter, very cold someday, but we have a, a beautiful weather. The summer is gone, the cool weather is coming up because I love winter. <laughs> this morning we're going to meditate in this verse. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. We go to the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. This verse, maybe we know by heart. How many of you did know this verse by heart? It's very easy. And we very often is repeated time after time. But this verse said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This verse like that is, is bringing a good message. But we're going to review this verse phrase by phrase, all right, or sentence by sentence. Let us go first. I have been crucified with Christ. Do you crucify your life with the Lord? Or just you left the Lord crucified there on the cross and you run away? As a Christian, we have to crucify ourselves with Christ if we want to live in full harmony with him. We cannot just let the Lord be crucified there and we live our own life. If we read Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14, someone can read from the congregation this verse. It's read right there in the, in the screen. Anyone? Or in the Bible? Hi, and can you read for us, please? What happened in this last sentence? By whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. What does it mean this, this part of, of this verse? I, I have been crucified with Christ. What does it mean this part is the world which one we live at this moment doesn't have any influence on my life doesn't have any influence of, on myself because I've been crucified with the Lord and I to the world. So what's happening in the world doesn't affect me in the spiritual way because I'm more concentrated and to live a life according in harmony with my Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the reason Paul said here, I've been crucified with the Lord. If we go back to the text, I found four times four time the word I. Three times the word me. Which this means is, it's a very personal experience in Paul's life in the relationship he keep and grow with the Lord. So, I, I, me, I, I, me, me. So, it's a very personal experience. Do we have this experience with the Lord? Or is there something missing in our spiritual life? Do I experience Jesus Christ on a daily basis? Or just I experience Jesus very seldom, or once a week when we come here to the church, expecting to be fed spiritually and we neglected during the week our spiritual food. So, I don't know if I... I, 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 I know a, a church member a long time ago. Which one I call him a part-time Christian? What I mean by this. From April to November... He was a perfect 
Christian with a Bible under his arm, with some books of the period prophecy in the other arms, and was all the time encouraged us to live godly life. We have to run away to the countryside. So all the time he pushed us in that direction. December until March, he lived in a very perfect worldly life. He drank himself, he smoked, and he do every naughty thing imaginable he, could, he do, or he did. But April coming up, and he appeared in the Bible a very good, true blue Christian person. He did, he lived a double life. The only thing he was, what he was doing, was deceiving himself. Because once we belong to the Lord, or we belong to the world. But we cannot be there sitting in the fence and doing what I like in some time and what I didn't like in the other time. And that's the reason here this verse is a very personal experience. And this verse must be our verse every single day because we have to live on a daily basis to experience Jesus. And also, how many of you would like to have eternal life? When you can start to live your eternal life? Now. You know what is meaning eternal life or everlasting life? Go to uh, uh, John chapter 3 and verse... No, John 17 verse 3. Someone can uh, read that, that verse, please. So we can know when uh, our eternal life can start and when we can start to experience eternal life. Someone find that verse? Rosemary, do you have that verse? Uh, John 17, 3. This is the eternal life that might know you. That what does it mean know? How we become acquaintance with our spouse? If we just communicate with them once a year, do you will know your spouse really well? And the spiritual arena is the same. If you want to know God, you have to co to have man maintain that communication every single day. It's like marriage life. If you want to grow in love with your spouse, you have to communicate, you have to keep the, that relationship alive. Or other way, it's no relation at all. And your relationship with your spouse starts to suffer if you neglect communication, if you neglect that profound relationship that might exist between a spouse. So that is what uh, Paul experienced. Let us go to the other, the other uh, sentence. It is no longer I who live. It is no longer I who live. So what is my experience with Jesus? Why? What experience I have with, with the Lord? Do I pray every day? Do I read the Bible every day? And do I read some devotional books there? So I can be fed spiritually. I can grow spiritually. Because that is very important. Paul said, for me, what, what he said? For me to live is cry and in to die is gain. So for Paul, that was Paul's experience. Another person, he died daily to Christ. So what does it mean by that? We have, we have to crucify ourselves. The self is a very, sometimes is very deceiving. Self sometimes can take us to the various places. Sometimes self, they can withdraw from the Lord. But we need to keep that experience on a daily basis. To, for me, to live is Christ. 
Who guides your life during the day? Is the Holy Spirit present in your life? We have, let us review our, our relationship with the Lord. Just for a split seconds. If I don't have, and if I don't live according to Jesus Christ, what will happen to us? If I don't have that experience with the Lord, what will happen? My spiritual life will be drying out. And I will be in a very good place to, to be overcome by the sin, to overcome by the, by the devil. But if I keep myself crucified with the Lord, if I leave Christ on a daily basis, my relationship with him will grow stronger and stronger. So that is why it is so important to leave Christ every single day by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let, let us go to the next one. But Christ lives in me. Another experience of Paul. Someone can read those verses there. Anyone? Lynn? Is Christ living in you? Is Christ living in you? Do you make a room in your heart so that Jesus Christ can live in yourself? But Christ live in me. That's the reason why, as a Christian, we have a great responsibility to show others what Jesus done in my life. You see, in many other, and, and uh, Paul also said that we are open witness so others can see Jesus. But always my question is about myself, about me, about Mario. What other people can read in me when I have a good, when I rely with them? I project the image of Jesus Christ in my life by words, by deed. What they see others in me? They see Jesus, a reflection of Jesus, or just they see a worldly man? That we have to be careful because we are responsible for the salvation of others. <coughs> so, if Jesus is living in me, what kind of example I will give to the others? What kind of testimony I will give to other peoples? You might know, I'm not always being in the ministry here in Australia. I finished my course there in Chile in 74, but past nine years after I, in, I go into the ministry here in Australia. So I work in various places. And one time I was Without employment, one friend of mine said, Mario, come with me to this warehouse because they need people there. There was about three more Adventists in that, in, in that uh, um, factory. And I said, okay, I, I'm start to work in as a casual, but I'm going to feel ashamed of these Adventists because was they... They discover a pattern how to take few things away from, from that warehouse. Because that was in, in, in Broadway, in Mountain Street, Harris Street. Because if they go enter into our warehouse, they can go right up to the top floor, grow across into the other warehouse, and come down in the lift with all the goods they take away. And they say to me, Mario, why you don't do the same? I say, no, because I'm a Christian and I have to keep my good reputation about myself. 
So, if Christ lives in me, do I have the right to take a few sins away from any way? No, because my life has to be in harmony with Jesus Christ's life. So that's the reason why it's so important for us what kind of example we are giving to others. Those people who put me in, in that place, they were terminated. And I was there for many years. So that's why God always bless us in that regard. Remember a Bible character, Joseph. What happened with Joseph? We know the story really well. He had a very terrible experience. But he never departed from God, even in the worst part of his life. The worst experience he faced at the very moment. All the time was focused on the Lord. And he was blessed. And he was rewarded for his faithfulness. So, in 21 century, we can have the same experience as in Joseph. If we keep alive our relationship with the Lord. And the life which I live now in the flesh, what have to be? If I live in the flesh, or I live in the, in the spiritual way, which one will be more carry more benefit for us as a Christian? If I live in the flesh and I do everything I like, or I live according to God's will? Which one will bring more benefit to our life? Which one will bring, bring more rewarding in the spiritual experience? Which one will bring more satisfactory relationship with the Lord? For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and world, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. So, which one you will choose? To live according to your own will or to live according to God's will? Because what Christian, sorry. What is the experience to those who, is, who have a, a good relationship with the Lord? What are you expecting right now? We expect the second coming of Jesus. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are your life in full harmony with Jesus Christ? Because only those who keep their relationship and they are fully committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to meet with Him. That is no good enough to be 99.99% a good Christian. 99.9% or 99.99% uh, of goodness is not enough to take me to heaven. God expects from me and from us 100% commitment to the Lord, to himself. Or other way, we run short of the grace of the Lord. So, if I live my life according to my, my own will, I'm in a great danger to lose heaven. But if I live according to God's will, for sure I'll be there. I'll be there in heaven. Do you want to be in heaven? Do not love the world or the sins in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What happens with those who love the world? The love of the Lord is not in them. And I, want, I, I don't want you to be one of them. I want you to live the Lord 
above everything here on earth because he gave everything for us he gave himself for us for all that is in the world the last of the flesh the last of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but of but is of the world Though, so that the bible is very clear in this regard if we love the lord we belong to him if we don't love the lord we belong to the world so is here is black and white is one thing of the other but it's not a color gray there I live by faith in the Son of God. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. Now, might the Lord direct your heart into the love of God and into the patience of of Christ. What Paul tried to encourage us, what is Paul saying to us? That the Lord is faithful. He will establish you. He will co confirm that you are sons and daughters of God. That is what Paul tried to say here. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you. He have confidence. So, is the Lord's confidence about you? That the Lord can trust you? Just meditate in this word. Now might the Lord direct your heart into the love of God and into the passion of Christ. Is that the Lord directing our life, our self, and everything that, that is in me? Do we have a room in our heart for the Lord? Is the Lord Jesus Christ living in me? Who loved me? Anyone know this verse, John 3.16? It's a very hard verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How much the Lord love you? How much the Lord gave to you? He gave everything, and he ran the risk to lose his son forever. Because if the smallest sin that Jesus commit against his father or against the law, Jesus could be crucified, go to the grave, and he never come back, and he never risen from the grave, because he was lost. But one thing that I assure me and I show my salvation, the Lord of this world, the Prince of this world, come, but he does have nothing on me. That proved Jesus Christ's life, a sinless life, and he lived that life because he won't rescue you. He wants your salvation and he ran that risk. The Lord has appeared of all to me saying, yes, I have loved you with everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn to you. From when the Lord is loving us, what kind of love the Lord used on us? Just was a temporary love? Just was at that moment? Or what the Bible is saying to us? I have loved you with everlasting love. So this love is from the very beginning of the eternity. Because that is when the Lord appeared. Can we put a day of, on the eternity? When eternity start to happen, do we have any clue? So from that time, the Lord is loving us. From that time, the Lord show us how much he loves us. So that is very important. And to finish, and he gave himself 
for me. Do we deserve Jesus' life? Do we deserve that Jesus died on the cross to rescue us? That verse is very powerful. It's a very clear statement why. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. God demonstrates his love on himself, not on us. In that world, we are still sinners. Christ died for us. Do we deserve the death of Jesus Christ in our favor? No. We don't deserve that. We don't deserve nothing from the Lord because we run away from the Lord. But Lord is chasing us and run after us. Why? Because he loved us from the eternity. And he want us to be rescued. And he want us to be saved. And he, God wants us to be there with him for the rest of the eternity. That is the most powerful message. So this verse of Galatians chapter 2, two and verse 20 is much more than just the verse. It's much more. It has a deep meaning for us and to keep our relationship with the Lord. So, my brothers and my sisters in the Lord, keep your life according to God's will. Live your life according to Jesus Christ's example. And let the Holy Spirit to guide your life until the soon return of Jesus Christ is my prayer this morning.